I think the boundary of music is unlimited. So we would encourage audiences who come to our concert to really try and test how imaginative you can be. And besides that, we are also featuring some music. The music that automatically came to my mind after I've seen the paintings and drawings of Jessica Zoop. And I had the pleasure of meeting her once in our concert, and we had a lovely talk. And after I've seen her albums of uh, the albums of her paintings, I was really impressed by the colors she uses and uh, the different kinds of patterns that she created. So music just came to my mind after seeing her paintings. So I thought, wow, maybe we can invite her to uh, be part of this concert where we can present her uh, drawings while we're playing some great music. So this time I've chosen Ravel's Tombeau de Coupouane, which goes really well with her <laughs> paintings. <laughs> in my myself personally I thought about it because I've always whenever I listen to um, particularly big orchestral music I've always seen actually sort of dancing color I've always seen it as dancing color so there was always a sort of an idea at the back of my mind that there could be a connection a, a really beautiful creative connection with musicians but I never had the opportunity and it was so exciting to have that both the experience of listening to music, but also the immediate excitement of knowing that someone had a, a much more creative way of sharing their music, you know, so it felt like just this incredibly exciting opportunity where the relationship between music and fine art could be furthered so that both, both could become stronger or both could be seen in a different way by working together. So at the two concerts that are going to be happening at City Hall on August the 6th and 7th, I know that your paintings are being shown as part of the, of the concert, but also what sort of thoughts will you be sharing with the audience that will be displayed? Oh, <laughs> I only wish I was going to be able to be there. Yes. So Wingsy is going to be speaking about it. So Wingsy will be explaining. But for me, the thing is, when I listen to music, so you, you obviously it's the amazing, your ears, you know, you hear that, you hear the wonderful sounds. But also, the extraordinary thing is the emotion, you know, so you feel the emotions as well. And then, for me, I also see, I see the the movement of the music in my mind. So I think what's really exciting is that when they're listening to the music, they might have a glimpse into how my mind works. And maybe that would give them inspiration when they're listening to, to pieces of music to see it in terms of visuals as well. And this particular piece of music is so apt for where my whole heart is because it's such a beautiful conversation. There's a sort of beautiful yearning, melancholy, but then the answer is always hopeful. And that's something that goes so deep into my practice, which is that however dark, however difficult, there's always light, there's always a shaft of light, there's always something to look towards. You know, it's transient, everything is transient. So we have to keep positive even when things seem really difficult. And I think this piece of music just captures that so beautifully so i think there's going to be a natural resonance between the areas that my work is trying to talk about if that's the right word or you know uh, investigate and the music music really if i if i could make music that would be how i'd like to communicate because music to me is the most instantaneous way of 
taking one into another, mm-hmm. into a complete other reality. But I can't make music. <laughs> so I have to, I make art. But the way that I make art is very much influenced and relates to the way that these wonderful composers make their music because it's because it creates a whole world and a whole sort of universe that you can get lost into 